Thank you for joining us. My name is Nathan Grisham. I'm the youth minister at Dogwood Grove Baptist Church. We thank you for taking the time to join our Bible study. Um, our prayer is that you grow closer to the Lord through this Bible study. It's designed for teenagers, children, uh, parents, grandparents, uh, Christian folks, non-Christian folks, baby Christians, mature Christians. We just want to reach out to everybody and we want to share God's love and God's word with everybody. So uh, watch this video. We ask you to like the video. Uh, down at the bottom of the page, copy the video, share it with others. Uh, I know, you know me personally, what I do is, is with these videos, I text them out to folks. Um, I send them on Facebook Messenger. Uh, I've emailed them to folks, uh, just however I can to get God's word out with these videos. And we hope you do that as well. So um, please join us. And I also ask you, I don't say this enough on here, is be in prayer for us as we record these videos, um, that, that God helps us to stay focused and stay the way and continue to do this. And and pray for these videos that God uses these videos to reach a multitude of people, because that's our desire um, is that God does that. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine, it says the heart is more deceitful than all else and is de desperately sick. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17, nine. I'll read it again. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, I thank you for the chance to do this. God, I thank you for the chance to record this video. God, I pray you be with those that are watching it today, tomorrow, 10 years from now. And God, I pray that, that you use this um, to help the person who's watching this today. God, I lift them up to you. God, I pray you bless them. Uh, and we love you and thank you for the chance to do this. In your name I pray, amen. So Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine. Um, it talks about man's heart. And, and I love the book of Jeremiah. Uh, I encourage you to dive in there and read the book of Jeremiah. I love it. And, uh, and I hope you have a desire not just to read Jeremiah, but to read God's word. Um, we're talking about the heart. And I believe reading God's word and diving into God's word will truly help your heart um, and help you spiritually. Um, the question is, is man, uh, is he good or evil by nature? What is man? Um, is the man's heart, is it inclined to righteousness or is it inclined to iniquity? That's a question. Uh, and so the human heart, the first thing is, is the human heart, it says that the human heart is deceitful, uh, is what it says in this verse. It says the heart is more deceit deceitful than all else. Okay, deceitful. Um, deceitful, a good slang word for this would be sneaky. Okay, it's not a huge word, but it's a good word describing what our, our human heart is. The human heart is not naturally good, okay? Um, we are born with a sin nature. We are inclined to sin. And also remember that the Bible says, Jesus said, no one is good but the Father, okay? And, and so the human heart is not good, okay? And so rather it's suitable to be sly and to be tricky and to be filled with trickery um, and, and fraud and cunning is what the human heart truly is. And, and our hearts deceive others, okay? And, and our hearts are also capable of deceiving us as well. And so uh, when we are born <clears throat> as a, as a non-Christian, we are born as non-Christians and we have this sinful heart and we have this sin nature that is in need of a savior. Okay. Everybody watching this video is a sinner. We all sin. Uh, if, if you're a teenager and you're watching this, you've lied to your parents, you've been dis dis disrespectful to your parents. That's a sin. If you're, if you're a grown person, you've watched this and you've you've um, been unethical and things and decisions you've made. That's a sin. OK, uh, all these things are important. If you're watching this, you're a Christian and you're not tithing the way you're supposed to. That's a sin. If you're watching this and and you haven't been going church the way you're going, you're supposed to. and You neglected your worship in that. That's a sin. If you're watching this and you've made alcohol more of a problem than than your relationship with God, that's a problem. OK, so there's all kinds of sins that we commit. It can be it can be slander. Um, it can be gossiping, all these sins. But what this is, it's all sin and it all comes from the heart. OK, and so the human heart, it says, is diseased. OK, it is. You say it's disease. I got I got heart disease. What do you what do you mean by that? It says that, that the heart is desperately sick. OK, because our hearts are infected by sin. Jesus said. From within, out of the heart of men, okay, proceeds evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, deeds of coveting and wickedness, of deceit, 
of envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from the inside of our heart, okay? Our heart is diseased, okay? And our heart is in need of a healing. And that healing is Jesus, okay? When when I was 10 years old, June 18th, 1984, I realized that my heart was diseased and that my heart was in need of a savior, okay? And so I asked Jesus to come into my heart so I can get that healing of my heart, okay? And, and we all need that. And then also, I have to repent of my sins on a regular basis to cleanse my heart and get my relationship back to where it needs to be with Jesus, okay? Uh, also, the human heart is dumbfounding. You say, what, is, what do you mean by that? What do you mean that the, the human heart is dumbfounding? It says, it says the heart, who can understand it? Someone might say, you say, I know my heart, okay? But the fact is only God knows our heart. This next verse in Jeremiah 17, 10, it says that, that only God knows our heart, okay? And his word, God's word, is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of our heart, okay? God knows our heart. I can see people. I can watch what they do. And I can kind of make a conclusion as to who they are and what they are. But only God truly knows their heart. Only God knows my heart. And only God knows your heart, okay? But he knows us better than we know ourselves. And he knows our heart, okay? That comes from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. God knows our heart, okay? So here's the deal. Man is a sinner by nature. We are born a sinner. And we are prone to rebel against God, okay? It's going to happen. Our hearts are deceptive, as we've said. And they're diseased. And they're dumbfounding. That's what our heart is. That's what we're, that's what we're dealing with, okay? And only God understands them. And only God can cleanse them and heal them through a heart transplant. You say a heart transplant, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a spiritual transplant, a spiritual transformation by you praying and asking Jesus into your heart to become a Christian. And then on a daily, regular basis, making it a priority to ask forgiveness of your sins and to strive to have a close relationship with him and help your heart grow closer to him. Okay, uh, my son, who is eight years old, uh, he takes this literally. And, and so uh, he's been doing this for years is when you talk to him is that he believes singing Christian music and reading God's word and reading God's stories, that it builds a literal wall brick by brick around his heart that protects his heart like a superhero shield. And he believes that. And when you talk to him, he believes that. Now, why I don't believe literally that these things develop a literal brick wall around your heart, but it does build a shield, a protective coating around your heart. Because as you grow closer to heart, as you grow closer to God, your heart grows stronger and your heart has a desire to honor him, to glorify him, to praise him. Okay. And, and how do we do that? We do that by developing a relationship with him and then reading God's word and being all about him, worshiping him, praise him, <clears throat> doing his service, striving to do his will. These things help us grow to him, grow closer to him. But I'll tell you this is that if you're not reading God's word, your heart's not close to him because God speaks you through, speaks to you through his word. So after you become a Christian, you need to be reading God's word to transform this heart. OK, here's the deal. We got to guard and take care of this heart that God has given us and our life depends on it. And this this is precious. OK, um, think about your spiritual heart. God has given you and think about that. And I ask you, where does the Holy Spirit live? The Holy Spirit, who is God on earth, lives inside of us. And we need to take care of this temple that God has given us and take care of this heart where the Holy Spirit lives. And we need to strive to be closer to him. And we know what this heart is and we know what this heart can do. And that's why we need Jesus. And we need to be in his word and we need to be in prayer. And we need to strive to have a close relationship with him. And we need to make that a priority. Let's pray. Father, I love you. God, I thank you for all your many blessings. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the scripture. And God, help us that each and every day that we grow closer to you. And God, help us to understand truly what our heart is and truly what our heart is capable of. And knowing that 
And God, I pray that we give our heart to you. We give our heart to you in salvation and that we give our heart to you on a regular basis, cleansing our heart, asking for forgiveness, cleaning this heart up, because what a wonderful blessing is that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us in this heart. Bless each and every person watching this. God, help us to make you a priority. In your name I pray. Amen.